There is a supernatural world, and sometimes it manifests to people like you and me. You'll hear lots of stories about this and so much more right here on Supernatural Confrontations. <laughs> I'm circling back to an earlier interview I did with Suzanne, and, and we, when I was discussing this with her, she, as a child, had a lot of different things happen, but I think you'll find this one incredibly interesting, and I'll get into that and a lot more right after a word from our sponsor. Do you remember how Facebook went down in October of 2021, and not just Facebook, but many websites around the world were down for hours? Folks, I remember that, and, you know, it's... That's how we make our living on the net. And when that goes down, you know, people don't buy books and DVDs. And anyway, I digress. That is how easy it is to shut down access to websites. There was another internet outage in Canada just recently where people could not even use debit cards. I remember that also. But internet may still be working. It's the domain names that do not work. This is why you cannot rely only on old school internet websites. You will simply be cut off from information during a societal collapse or an emergency. Thankfully, there is now a social media platform called Bastion that does not depend on legacy internet. I am active on Bastion. We just started this and I ask that you would go, just go check it out. You'll see it right there. You can see it in front of you. It's under Marzuli. So now you can follow me there. You can download their app through a link below this video. It works like Bitcoin, speaking to computers around the world. So you can never be blocked from seeing me and other bloggers, other people who create content, as long as basic internet is running. Bastion is anonymous, even has Tor network built in. So there's no need for a VPN. You can just follow me there. Bastion devs announced that any followers who comments my videos on Bastion at least twice will get a gift of two pocket coin automatically on their Bastion profile. So this is pretty cool. That means, you know, you're, you're earning money. Get the link below and be free from centralized internet. Let me show you how easy it is to register. Once you download the app and install it, select sign up. You will simply create a nickname. Mine, of course, is Marzuli. No personal information is required. You can add an avatar to your profile. You will get a special private key, and it's really long, so you want to copy that and put it in your notes. This is your login and password all in one. You have to write down or copy it and put it in notes or whatever, but you have to write down this private key. Don't show it to anyone. It cannot be recovered if lost. So folks, I'm on Bastion now. Um, just in case the unthinkable happens, we've stopped doing PPS report and this is why we uh, have another, another site and we're excited about that. And you can just go follow me right over there and uh, never miss another show. So follow me over to bastion.com. That's bastion.com. So sometimes young children, and I've heard this before, where young kids are, are seeing into the spirit world. Our eldest daughter, Corey, would see stuff when she was like five, six, seven, and eight. And it's disturbing because you don't know, well, you know, why is she seeing things like this? I remember when I was a child. Um, and I had a fever. I, I saw the hag. We've all heard reports of the hag, the old woman. I used to call her the pitter-patter lady. I get chills just thinking about it even right now. But I call her the pitter-patter lady. But she was the hag. And she was in the corner of the room. And I was terrified of her. Just terrified of her. And I would start screaming and, and yelling. And my parents would come running in. And, you know, what's wrong? What's, what's wrong? And, you know, there she is, the pitter-patter lady. Because I called her the pitter-patter lady because she was mumbling something. Look, the supernatural world is real. And, you know, people like Suzanne talking about things like this in church, they're often ostracized. Not here. Not here on Supernatural Confrontations. You know, just think of what we read about in the pages of the Guidebook of a Supernatural, i.e. our Bible. It's just chalk with supernatural experiences. 
And some of it, you know, people really don't want to hear, well, that just happened thousands of years ago. Well, it's not going to happen again now. Oh, I don't think that that's correct, if I do say so myself. So that's why we're here. If you've got an experience uh, and you'd like me to do a Zoom interview, please shoot me an email, supernatural at lamarzulli.net, supernatural at lamarzulli.net. Before I bring Suzanne on, of course, it's a pre-record. I will be at the Hawking Hills Bigfoot Festival this Friday, I'm sp or yeah, Friday and Saturday. I'm, I'm the keynote. I, I think I go on at 7.30 uh, or 5. I'm not sure exactly what time it is, but I'm, I'm the last person to speak on Friday night. Hope to see you there. I know that uh, we heard from the from B and, and Matt Hines, a good friend of mine, who are helping to put on the conference, and they said that there's a buzz. People are anxious to, to hear what I have to say. And um, I've been a student of Bigfoot for decades, and I think you'll find, if you're there in the area, my presentation uh, not only rewarding but educational at the same time. So here's our, our interview with Suzanne. So I'm here with Suzanne, and it's going to be a little strange for some of you but it's a supernatural confrontation. And it also gets into some, some things which are, I mean, it's bizarre and I get that. But the whole idea of this platform is to give people like Suzanne and some of you who are watching a place to come and, and air and talk about what happened to you. You know why? Because there's other people on this planet. You're not alone, first of all, guaranteed. We, you might, we might not you know, know who, who else had a similar experience like Suzanne, but I've heard similar things to Suzanne's story. So Suzanne, welcome to the show, Supernatural Confrontation. Thanks for being bold and courageous for coming on the record. So um, something happened to you in very early childhood. Tell us about that. Well, when I was a young child, I used to see things that others did not see. Um, and it took a while for me to figure out that they didn't see them. Um, there was just frightening things that um, were in between uh, actual live people that um, I just thought others ignored if it was a little strange. Then I had an experience when I had just barely learned to walk and talk mm -hmm. where I decided to talk to one of these that I was seeing. And this particular individual was a woman that had extremely short hair, was extremely thin with uh, no clothes on, but she was smashed against the wall. She reminded me of a concentration camp uh, individual. And um, she would appear every so often on my wall. And this time I decided to go up and talk to this individual. And so when I approached this, uh, this thing, I went up and said, hi, my name's Suzanne. And uh, my sister came over, my older sister, and she said, well, wh who are you talking to? And I said, well, the lady on the wall. And she said, uh, there's nothing up there. You're weird. And then I remember thinking to myself, well, that's it then. That's why nobody's talking to them. They don't see this. Um, I uh, kind of uh, associate some of the things that I saw to um, an individual that I saw on the show called The Dead Files with um, Amy Irving. She kind of talks about elementals often, and this is the closest to what I could describe of what I would see. Um, I also would see what looked like a Native American in my basement, and he would be uh, staring off in one direction every time I would go in the basement, and I did try to talk to him, but he would not engage. Um, I did see shadows. Um, I think I was dealing with a shadow person or shadow people in the basement, um, at uh, one time, I, um, I guess it was more than one time, I would see these dashed lines around individuals who I would describe as like doctors. Um, they seem to be um, discussing my sister who is special needs. And I think that they had malicious plans as to what they were going to do um, and I would always get so angry because I couldn't do anything as a child. And I remember praying about this. Um, 
Uh, but the main story and the one that I reached out to you for um, had to do with an, an encounter with a shadow person. And this is something that I have not heard anyone else reply on and why I was um, reaching out because I'd love to know if anyone else has had this experience. But um, when I was young, I had a very gentle father who used to come and pray over me in the, in the night. And um, I thought that he was looking in on me because I saw a man shadow in uh, the doorway. And so I saw this shadow for several evenings in a row. And then uh, I decided I was going to give my dad a hug because I thought how sweet he is uh, checking in on me every night and um, you know, how nice this is. And so I shouted it out, uh, daddy. And when I shouted daddy, he replied, what from the other room? Mm -hmm. And it wasn't in the hallway. And I remember saying, uh, never mind, uh, mommy. And then mom also shouted from the other room. I knew it wasn't my mom because this was definitely a male in the hallway. But when she said what, and I said, uh, never mind. Then I uh, realized something else was looking at me. And so for several nights, um, knowing that this flat shadow, a uh, black figure, um, in, in the future, I learned about shadow figures and I heard that some have hats or have red eyes, but this was just a black flat shadow male. I had to go to the bathroom really bad one night. And so I decided to just go ahead and pretend like it wasn't there and run right through it because I had to go that bad. And so I remember getting up my courage as I was walking towards the door. And then I closed my eyes. And when I got to the door to run through, my hair flew back, my body tingled. And when I landed, and I did land on the other side of the shadow figure, and I looked up, I was in my house, but it wasn't my house. It was like another place or dimension because every doorknob and wall. And I remember the, the uh, oven in the kitchen had eyes and they were all angry. And it was almost like each item in the house had become uh, an elemental in a way, like it was, um, had, had its personality. And it was all super angry at me. I've never felt more hated in my entire life and the mumblings and the anger and all the hatred that was on this experience. And then standing there as a child, almost not being able to believe what I saw, I had a voice that came in my ear and it was gentle and it said, go back the way you came or you'll be stuck here forever. And so then I remember going, oh, well, I don't want to be stuck here. And I turned around and it was the shadow again, a flat, it's still the flat shadow, almost like the backside of it. I went ahead and jumped through it. And again, my hair flew back and, and I had the tingling and then I landed again. Didn't have to go to the bathroom anymore. <laughs> Ran over to my bed and put the covers over my head. I was so scared and shaking. And I remember praying to God and saying, God, please, please help me. I cannot handle this anymore. I'm seeing things that nobody else sees. I don't think I can handle this. And this was just too scary for me. Please take this away from me. And he did. Now that's not the end of stories that I've had, but I no longer have things that I see constantly. So. Wow. You know, what's the, the, the amazing part, I mean, you're, you're a child, you're like six or seven years old, that, that innocence of a child, and you're just crying out to the God who, of the universe, and, and he shows up and he stops, stops the encounters, the confrontations, at least for the most part. What I find interesting about her testimony is she was trapped in what I could only construe as a parallel universe. 
uh, shadow people in parallel universes. That's what the title of, of this particular supernatural confrontation is. It's disturbing because she could have been stuck there. And we've, we've heard stories like this from, from other people. We haven't put them on supernatural confrontations, but over the years I've heard stories of people um, finding themselves for a brief moment in time in what can only be described as a parallel universe. I don't have all the answers, folks. No one does. But I do know this. The supernatural is real. It's absolutely real. And sometimes we encounter it. And oftentimes it's angelic. Sometimes it's not so friendly. If you Remember, if you have a supernatural confrontation, I will interview you via a Zoom chat. Shoot me an email. Uh, at supernatural at lamarzuli.net. We'll see you tomorrow. Remember, there is a supernatural world, and sometimes it manifests to people like you and me. Thanks so much for watching, and remember to hit that little subscribe button.